Um, I'm sure you've heard by now, but you join us uh, with the sad news about the passing of uh, DJ Steve Wright. Steve was a colleague and a friend of mine. He was one of the greats. He was a master of his craft. Uh, he took his job exceptionally seriously without ever taking himself too seriously, which I think is the number one rule in this industry. And he was just a really decent man who has always had a kind word for everyone. Hello, welcome to this morning. A sad start to the day. Usually full of so much love, of course, because it's Valentine's Day, but coming up, uh, Steve's friends and his colleagues. And when you say those two words, they're very intertwined. No one was a colleague of Steve that wasn't a friend of Steve. Help the us remember. The weirdest thing is, wow, is that I didn't know him, but I felt like yeah, I knew him. that was the Just gift. literally Absolutely. knowing him on radio. Well, he's part I mean? of the, He's genuinely is up there with Gambo and he's up there yeah. with Tony Blackburn. He's probably part of the fabric of, of this country yeah. and on our, our airwaves. Uh, well, people such as Gambo, his friends, uh, remember a man who was part of the soundtrack to our lives. Take a look. Steve Wright in the afternoon. All right, now, just after two o'clock now, today have we got a lot of stuff for you. We have got... So, Steve Wright, broadcaster, DJ, the man who accompanied the music we love has died at the age of 69. Uh, this morning, we assembled some of his closest friends and colleagues to join us to help us remember and celebrate his life. Yeah, so joining us on the sofa first is Steve Wright's Radio 1 and Radio 2 colleague and friend, Paul Gambaccini. Gambo, thanks for joining oh, us. Welcome to the show. Thank you for coming. Thank um, you for having me. So let's talk about Steve, one of the all-time greats. What was it about him, do you think, that, that sort of marked him out from the rest? Steve understood that, at its best, radio was a club where anyone who listens feel they are a member. Yeah. And all you have to do to be in the club is tune in. And once you're in, you're into this wonderful, happy world. The world of Steve Wright, with his posse, with his characters, with the factoids, and also his technical skill. You know, you've shown some clips of him from his early days on Radio 1 in which he was an octopus. Mm. Now, I know that Noel, Another one of our friends, and I mean that, uh, is coming up from New Zealand. Noel was also a master of timing. Steve was an absolute master of timing. In those days, when we used tape cartridges mm -hmm. before computers, you had to do everything by hand. Steve was an octopus. If you were in the studio, <laughs> he was putting one card in, taking out another one. All of the seven-inch vinyl records yeah. that he put on himself, he didn't just press on a computer screen. And it was really like watching an octopus. And he understood that people want to be happy. And that he never was political. He never talked things that were serious in a solemn sense. Mm. Because he realized that happiness is also serious. Yeah. Yeah. The business of being happy is serious. So true. Yeah. And the thing is, he was a... He was a master at preparation, wasn't he? Oh. He would come in way early than he needed to be there. <laughs> then he would stay longer after doing his show. What was, where do you think that came from in him? Uh, I, I, I use the uh, expression, almost faking it to look spontaneous. He prepared. Oh, his prep was extraordinary, wasn't it? Yes, he did come in hours before the show. He knew what he was going to do when. And that's when the greats like Noel and Chris Evans shone. They made it sound like it was off the cuff, but it was really well planned. And Steve uh, stayed afterwards, as you know, this was his life. Yeah. He we... gave us his life yeah. Yeah. for 44 years, five days a week, and then six with love songs. Yeah. He was on air, prepping before and after, that was his life. Radio was his life. But you know, Paul, he was a kind man as well. I mean, I just saw a shot of, of you, Tony Blackburn, and Steve there. And I don't want to embarrass you, but you're exactly the same. I've been at Radio 2 almost 20 years now. And I'll never forget, like, within my first week, it felt like you were joining a family. Really? And, and, and people who had no reason to went out of their way. These, you know, the probably titans of the broadcasting world went out of their way, and I count you amongst that number, Paul. That Steve went out of his way to make sure you were welcome. Aww. Just go, hello, young man, how's it going? You're doing so well. You know, the pep talk, Aww. unnecessarily, the pep talk, it just genuinely was a really inclusive guy when he really didn't have to be. He remembered what it was like to be new. Yeah. 
and he wanted everybody to feel as secure as they could be. That's so lovely. And you were supposed to see him tomorrow. Was it tomorrow? Well, uh, we, we had spoken at great length on Saturday. Yeah. I had sent him two emails yesterday, not realizing he had left us. And I was due to talk to him tomorrow because of the uh, subject of the new radio stations that BBC is supposedly mm. introducing. And we were the only two people who'd been mentioned in the news release. Yeah. So no we surprise were, there. We were, <laughs> but we were thinking, what is this about? Yeah. You know, and we were trying to figure it out. And Paul, you know, I want to talk to Noel about this as well, but he was a real innovator, wasn't he? I mean, this new radio format. He used to go on holiday to America and just drive around to listen to the radio station. Are you serious? Oh, he was extraordinary. He was a... Yes, often after the Friday show was over, he'd go to Heathrow and fly to the States. And he would go in a hotel room or drive around and he'd listen. And he heard Scott Shannon, who originated the so-called zoo format, yeah. which is when you don't just have one person or one man and one woman, you have a posse, uh -huh. you have a group of people. And he brought that to Britain and Greg James, in his appreciation yesterday, credited Steve by saying all of the people who like him have different people running in and out of the studio during the show, owe it to Steve Wright. Yeah, 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 he brought sure. it to this country. Wow, what an amazing, incredible man. Well, listen, joining us now from New Zealand is Noel Edmonds. Morning, Morning Noel. Noel. It's so good to see you. Uh, you frequently uh, appeared on Breakfast Time and the Late Late Breakfast Show with him, didn't you? Yes. Um, thank you. Good morning to you. Um, and, Paul, thank you for your very kind comments. We have lost one of the greatest exponents of the art of radio. And radio, if done well, is an art form. And I know Steve has been described as a DJ. For me, he wasn't a DJ. Um, he's been described as a broadcaster. I actually don't like the term broadcasting because that rather suggests that you are shoving content out there, spray and pray, and it might hit a listener or a viewer. That wasn't Steve's style. Steve was one of those very small band, Wogan being one of them, who was a brilliant communicator. And the thing about being a communicator is you are born with it. You can't fake it. Yeah. Uh, the microphone or the camera will find you if you are trying to be something you're not. And I think the reason why so many people are genuinely distressed by this premature departure is that Steve was a friend because he could communicate. And I, I, I know Paul will get this because both Paul and I love radio. Yeah, I had a, a very uh, interesting TV career for 30 odd years, but radio was always my, my first love. And the thing about Steve was he had his own weapons and his own tools. So people think that a, a radio presenter, communicator, only has to talk. Um, but no, what Steve was capable of doing was actually um, controlling the speed of delivery. He would change the tone of his voice. He would sometimes pause, which, of course, is, is, is really bad news in radio because everybody <laughs> freaks out completely. And, and the, thing, the thing that really worked for him was the giggle the Steve Wright giggle, which he used in a number of different ways. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't all feel great when we go into a studio and you put on a face, you, you act a bit. And he would giggle even when he didn't feel like it. What he also would do is use the giggle to cover up something if he's had a complete cock-up. <laughs> We've all done it. You set off down a route with something that you think is brilliant and very quickly, because it's live, you get into it and you think, oh, bloody, I wish I hadn't started this one. <laughs> and he would giggle. He would giggle. He, he would. He would giggle his way out of it. And just like Terry, just like the greats, um, uh, of which... Uh, Thankfully, we still have got Tony Blackburn, Ken Bruce, people like that. You know, Steve would use these weapons and these tools, but the listener wouldn't get it. They, they don't see it because it was done so naturally. 
I've been very fortunate over the years to meet great racing drivers, great helicopter pilots, great sportsmen. You know, all the really key people, the legends, make it look so easy. Steve, as we've heard, worked so hard, incredibly hard, and he made it look easy. Yeah. And Noel, just a word about, I think people quite underestimate how big that Radio 1, like the, the whole team of Radio 1, like when I was a kid, when Radio 1 came to town, when they did the road show in Clacton or somewhere, the world stopped. You know, you, you literally, you know, and Steve was kind of, you know, one of the titans of that, wasn't he? Yeah, um, as you know, Dermot, it's a very, very different era now and a new generation cannot possibly fully appreciate the power of a national radio station. I mean, when I took over from Tony and did The Breakfast Show, I was getting 14 million people mm. uh, listening each morning. As you say, the road show, we would go out. I remember, I think for a while, I held the record of the biggest crowd ever, 24,000 people, the police said, were on the beach at Newquay. We, we were part of people's lives. Um, commercial radio then came along and that diminished that influence. But, you know, we have all been so fortunate. And you're looking at a guy who is so, so fortunate that I was part of that era. We touched people in a way that will never happen again. Mm. And um, I mourn the passing of this great talent, this marvellous man, he had integrity. He had sincerity. He had this incredible commitment to the people he would never meet. And we are, unfortunately, coming, I think, to the end of that radio era. So please cherish the Ken Bruces and the Tony Blackburns and the Gambos. Cherish them because we're coming to the end of an era. Noel, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Great Noel. to talk to you. We're also joined by Tony Miles, better known as, uh, to many of us, as Smiley Miley. Worked alongside Steve for years. He joins us now from his home in Bristol. Firstly, Tony, my condolences from all of us here this morning. Uh, a very sad morning, especially when someone's worked so intimately as you have uh, with Steve. He was an interesting character, wasn't he? Because for someone who was so ubiquitous and such a huge part of our life, what I noticed when I, met, when I got to know him a bit better was just how private he was. Like, he would never turn up for gatherings or anything, just very much kind of walk to the beat of his own drum. Not in an aloof way, but just a, he's just a, he's a, just a very shy man. Correct, um, guys, you know, is that when, when, when Steve turned up and did the Radio 1 Roadshow, we had 30,000 people who just came, wanted to see Steve create his afternoon show to the public, to his friends. And those 30,000 was his family. And he created um, that magic as a, as a presenter, broadcaster. How do I follow Noel and, and Paul? They've both said, you know, what I would love to say, but it's already been said, is that he was a, a very generous person with his time. He was generous when we walked down the street. If he's seen someone not well off, wanted a cup of coffee, he would pull out five, ten, twenty pounds. He, he, he wanted to look after people. And, and I think it just resonates now that what a lovely, kind man he, he was on the radio and as a person. Yeah. And Tony, back in the day, could you tell that he was going to be a big star? Yeah, I mean, uh, I met, I met uh, Steve when he did his first road show and it was actually with Noel. He did a 24-hour lawnmower race and he did his <laughs> afternoon show. And he presented... <laughs> he presented that show for two hours. He was totally nervous. And what, what, what he'd done, when he came off that, um, uh, that show, he didn't know what to do. He jumped in his car and... He didn't know that he had to sign autographs, take pictures. But the following year, in 82, when he did the first week of the road show, and I think it was around the West Country, um, he'd already established himself on Radio 1 in the afternoon. And, you know, you knew then, with his characters, as it says on my sweatshirt, Mr Angry and Mr Angry, Sid the Manager, those, those were the characters which he brought to life on the radio, and he brought to life actually on the stage of the road show. So Steve was a master at his craft. Um, he worked at it. 
he, he was in Radio 1 at 10 o'clock in the morning for his afternoon show. As everybody has said, he worked tirelessly. Um, and when he was on the road show, at night, wherever we went, he'd always have a notepad. He was writing bits and pieces, quips and whatever. But as Noel would say, and Paul, he played his own records. He played his own carts. He was a master at radio. He didn't want to do any telly. Um, he was a very private person. And I have to say, I loved him dearly. Mm. Very much like the 10 million people who used to listen to his, his program. Uh, you know, is another true story. There's so much love, love tunes, love songs on yeah. the radio. Yeah. Um, and, and as you say about the road show, Steve Wright, there Clapton, they loved him wherever he went. <laughs> Clapton on sea, that there was. Is, yeah. Clapton on sea. Oh, Tony, thank, thank you, you so much. much for joining us. Noel, it's a yeah, real pleasure Clapton to speak to you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate <laughs> thank your time. You. Thank you. And thanks, Gambo. Yeah. We're, we're reeling at Radio 2, aren't we? It's gonna, oh, it's, oh, yeah. Hopefully we'll put on a fitting tribute to him. You know, a, I know there's lots of stuff online now, but as, as time passes, hopefully we'll, there'll be a, some sort of remembrance. But um, it's great I'm to sure. get you inside. It's going to be so it. sad not to hear his voice. I drive really? my son to, we go, we go to a thing called Ruggabugs on Sunday. And we always get in just, just to hear love songs, which is kind of a, it's a funny show, love songs, because it's basically Steve just play, taking it over. And they sort of play love songs, but it's largely just a Steve Wright show on a Sunday and morning. And isn't it weird that it's Valentine's Day today and we're talking about yeah. Steve? It's unbelievable. But thank you to thank all, you, all of Thanks you for joining much. us. Anyway, coming up next, Tom and Saida are going to be joining us in today's news review. Yeah, but uh, we'll take you into the break this Valentine's Day. As Steve Wright would have wanted with one of his favourites. You're beautiful, it's true I saw your face in a crowded... We are going to close the show with the same way Steve Wright would. Steve was much more than a radio DJ. He was the voice of a soundtrack of our lives. Steve, thank you. Steve right in the afternoon. All right, now, just after two o'clock now, today have we got a lot of stuff for you. This is Megan from Purley, Mr. Angry. Mr. I'm reading Angry. about a couple of things in the paper today. Hello there, good evening. I'm Steve Wright. Welcome to Top of the Box. We have an excited crowd. I just wanted to not be a talking about the music guy. I wanted to talk about things. So whatever it was that concerned people. Steve Wright, Sunday love songs. Hello, this is Steve Wright. Your dedications, your shout-outs and stories. Uh, that's it for today for Love Songs, and I'm back for more Love Songs next Sunday. Ta-da, then. <laughs>